ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث حديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fin nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire from ma'ma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam the word sharia it refers to the entire religion of islam what allah chose for his slaves it is what he has prescribed for us to exp- what explains to them the commands and the prohibitions the halal and the haram the one who follows the sharia of allah to the best of his or her ability <coughs> regarding what is permissible they do what is prohibited they stay away from this person will be successful but the one who goes against the sharia of allah exposes themselves to allah's wrath and anger even though sharia is not the law of the land here as a muslim you must know and understand and affirm and believe that sharia is the best system for the person to live the life on for a country to live by etc and if it was followed then the muslim and the non-muslim would be safe there would be secure there would be peace and happiness and justice would prevail allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said he says thumma ja'alnaka ala shari'atin min min al-amr فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says what means then we have put you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on a plain way by our commandment like the commandment we gave the messengers before you to follow the tawheed and that which follows it so follow you this tawheed and its laws and follow not the desires of those who know not ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوح والذي اوحينا اليه وما وصينا به ابراهيم وموسى وعيسى ان اقيم الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه كبر على المشركين ما تدعوهم اليه الله يجتبي اليه من يشاء ويهدي اليه من ينيب الله says what means it is allah who is he who has ordained for you the same religion islam the same tawhid that he ordained upon Nuh, upon Prophet Noah alayhi salam, and that which we inspired to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and that which we ordained to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, saying that you should establish the religion to do what it orders you to do and make no divisions in it. Do not split and, and, and become into sects, of course staying upon the truth. Intolerable for the mushrikun is that which you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi called them to. Allah chooses for Himself who He wills, and He guides unto Himself who turns to Him in repentance and obedience. Even disagreeing with one letter of the Quran is a reason for you to leave and exit the Deen of Allah, to exit the Deen of Islam. 
to become a disbeliever by just disbelieving one ayah or one letter, عفواً, one letter from the Qur'an. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله ليس للإنسان أن يخرج عن الشريعة في, في شيء من أموره بل كل ما يصلح له فهو في, في الشرع من أصوله وفر وفروعه وأحواله وأعماله وسياساته ومعاملته وغير ذلك والحمد لله رب العالمين وسبب ذلك أن الشريعة هي طاعة هي طاعة الله ورسوله وأول الأمر منا وقد قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأول الأمر منكم شيخ الإسلام من تيمية may Allah have mercy upon him he said Man has no right to go against the Sharia. We have no right to go against the laws that Allah ordained for us in any of His affairs. Rather, everything that is good for Him and well-being is referred to in Sharia. Whether it has to do with major issues or minor issues, it all comes from the Sharia. In all His situations and actions, all His transactions and dealings with other people and so on. So praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. The reason for this is that Sharia means obedience to Allah and to His Messenger وسلم, and those in authority amongst us. This is what refers to the meaning of what Allah said, O you who have believed, obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those in authority amongst you. So Allah has enjoined this obedience to Him and to His Messenger وسلم, in many verses, many ayat in the Quran and He has forbidden disobedience to Him and disobedience to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's promised his good pleasure, forgiveness, mercy, jannah, in return for those who are obedient to him and to his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has promised the opposite, the, jah- the, hem- the hellfire, jahannam, for those who are disobedient to Allah and to his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore everyone, whether they're a scholar, whether they're a, a ruler, whether they're a devoted worshiper, whether they're an individual that you deal with in dealings and transactions, they must obey Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in whatever they are doing, whether it is teaching or learning, judging, enjoining what is good, forbidding what is evil, doing any deed, any act of ibadah, anything else, you must go back to Allah and to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The maqala Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله وحقيقة الشريعة اتباع الرسل والدخول تحت طاعتهم كما أن الخروج عنها خروج عن طاعة الرسل وطاعة الرسل هي دين الله شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله continued saying the true meaning of Sharia is following the messengers that Allah sent for us to learn from and emulate from and to take from and obeying them but going against the Sharia means going against the obedience to the messengers and obedience to the messengers, that is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no dividing the sunnah away from the Qur'an. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the scholars of the Lajna Da'im, of the permanent committee, they said Sharia is that which Allah sent down in His books and His messengers to the people so that they would put into practice by way of worshipping Allah and seeking to draw close to Him in accordance with what the messengers alayhim salatu wassalam in accordance with, the, with what they enjoin. The right way to be followed is in accordance to this. In other words, what is in accordance with the instructions of Allah who sent it down to the last of His messengers, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as he said, وَأَنَّ هَذَا سِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبَلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَوَفَقَ قَوْلِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم ستفترق أمتي على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار إلا واحدة قيل من هي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كان على مثل ما أنا عليه وأصحابي فهي داخلة في الشريعة الله سبحانه وتعالى he says and moreover this is my path which is straight so follow it and do not follow other ways for you will be separated from His way, from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is in accordance with the statements and the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu who said, my ummah will split into 73 different sects or divisions, different groups going away from the one group that's the, the, the truth. 
The Prophet ﷺ, he said, all of them will be in the fire. Even though they may say, La ilaha illallah. Even though they may pray amongst you and fast amongst you and make hajj amongst you. All of them in the fire except for one. So the companions, radiallahu anhum wa they said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, which group is that? He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who follow the path that I am on and the path that my companions follow. This is included in sharia. So we must take heed of this and follow this strictly. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, therefore, all of our issues have some guidance in the sharia. And nowadays we're being riddled with these issues from homosexuality and the LGBTQ movement on a big scale to other broader issues like imitating the disbelievers in their holidays, in their dress and their hairstyles and so on. One major issue that is taking now the world by storm, especially in America, and the Muslims have thrust themselves into the debate where there is no debate, is this issue of abortion. And when you can terminate a child, and you have Muslims making statements about the deen of Allah that are false and have no validity, or they're stretching the truth or contorting the truth or manipulating the truth. These things of, you have Muslims saying, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-choice or whatever. This is legislated to us as Muslims. This is not your decision. This is not a, a, a way where you can choose or give your opinion or your intellect. This is sharia, this is legislated by Allah. So let us look at what Allah says about life in general, or the killing of a life in general. قَالَ اللَّهُ قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَتَلُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ سَفَهًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَحَرَّمُوا مَا رَزَقَهُمُ اللَّهُ إِفْتِرَاءً عَلَى اللَّهُ قَدْ ضَلُّوا وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ Allah says what means, those who have lost, those will have lost. They will be losers, those who killed their children in foolishness without knowledge and prohibited what Allah has provided for them, inventing untruth about Allah. They have gone astray and they were not rightly guided. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادُكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقٍ نَحْنُ, نر... نحن نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ إن... إن... إِنَّ قَتْلَهُمْ كَانَ خِطْأً كَبِيرًا Allah says what means, and do not kill your children for fear of poverty. We provide for them and for you. Indeed, their killing is ever a great sin. And this is a whole... Yeah, we can get into another bigger issue of this. Because this is what the Muslims have kind of slipped into. Planning when they will have children. Planning how many they will have. Thinking along those lines. In essence, yani fearing poverty or wanting to have a certain lifestyle. So that dictates to them how many kids they want to have. And how big their families should be and the likes of these matters. قال الله يا أيها الناس إن كنتم في ريب من البعث فإن خلقناكم من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم من علقة ثم من مضغة مخلقة وغير مخلقة لنبين لكم ونقر في الأرحام ما نشاء إلى أجل مسمى ثم نخرجكم طفلا ثم لنب ثم لتاب لغوا أشدهم أشدكم ومنكم من يتوفى ومنكم من يرد يرد إلى أرض للعمر لكي لا يعلم من بعد علم شيئا الله says what means O mankind if you doubt the resurrection if you doubt that Allah will one day resurrect you from death and bring you to account then verily we have created you Adam عليه السلام from dust and then from anutfa, from mixed drops of fluids from the male and the female, then from a clot, a thick piece of coagulated blood, then from a lump of flesh, the mudha, some formed and some unformed. The ghayru mukhallaqa, this one is the one that was miscarried, that we may make it clear to you, that we may show you the power and the ability, ability resides with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we cause whom we will to remain in the wombs for an appointed term. Then we bring out you as infants, then give you growth that you may reach your age of full strength. And amongst you those are there are those who die young, and amongst you there are those who will be brought back to a miserable old age, so that he knows nothing after having known something. Yeah, as you end those later years of life. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, look at the hadith. <clears throat> عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المسوق 
إن أحدكم يجمع في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقيا أو أم سعيد In this first part of this narration that we find in Bukhari and Muslim Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is the truthful one and the one to be believed he narrated to us verily the creation of each one of you is brought together in the womb of his mother for 40 days in the form of a nutfah notice the wording that he is already created as the form of a nutfah you might not see his hands or his head or his legs but the creation has begun He's created in the womb of his, mother, of his mother 40 days as a nutfah, as a drop. Then he becomes an alaka, a clot of blood. Then he becomes a mudgha, the morsel of flesh for a life period. Each of those periods is 40 days, 40 days, 40 days. Then there is sent to him an angel who blows into him at 120 days, four months, the soul. <clears throat> and he's commanded to write down four matters, to write down his risk, his sustenance, his lifespan, how long he'll live, his actions, and whether he will be happy or unhappy, meaning whether he will make it to Jannah or, or not. This comes in the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَقَدْ خَلَقُكُمْ أَثْوَارًا He said, while He, Allah, has created you in different stages, again, even though the soul goes in at 120 days, 4 months, the creation by Allah's decree has begun. For 40 days as a mutfa, 40 days as an alaqa, 40 days as a mudgha, Allah created you in these stages that Allah chose. When we go back to the ulama now, taking all of this in perspective, and there's more than that, we look with the permanent scholars, we always go back to the ulama. We are not, even the doctors without the ulama are nothing. We don't just listen to them, the ulama have to guide us onto our understanding of the deen, and our understanding of the sharia. The permanent senior scholars, they issued this statement. It is not permissible to abort a pregnancy at any stage unless there is a legitimate reason and within precise limits. You don't determine the reason. And without the ulama verifying the validity of that reason, it should not be done. It has to be valid, very valid as we will see. Number two, if the pregnancy is in the first stage, the nukfa stage in that first 40 days, Aborting and aborting it has a legitimate pers- purpose. Like we know something, there's something that's proven amongst the doctors, and you take this back to the scholars, then it may be permissible, but not because you don't want it, not because you're fearing how you will pay for it, not because it's not coming at the right time, like you didn't plan it to come at this time. These are not legitimate reasons. These are baloney reasons. They have no validity. You are killing a life. Even if the soul has not gone into it, you're killing something Allah created. But the scholar said, aborting it at this stage for fear of difficulty of raising the children or being unbear, un, uh, unable to bear the costs of maintaining and educating them or fear for their future or because the couple say they have enough children, this is not permissible. This is like as good as killing another soul. Thirdly, it is not permissible to abort a pregnancy when the alaqa or the mudgha, which are the second and third periods of 40 days we mentioned, until a trustworthy medical committee has decided that continuing the pregnancy poses a threat to the mother's well-being. If the mother will die from it, and you have three doctors or so, a committee, that all validate this, then there is permission but you shouldn't rush to find that because so many times there has been errors. Fourthly, after this third stage and after four months have passed, now the soul has gone into the baby. If it's miscarried after this time according to the ulama, the baby should still be named. The baby should be given a janazah. The baby should have the aqiqah performed for it. If the soul has blown into it and the body parts are now visible, they say after this third stage, where four months have passed, it is not permissible to abort the pregnancy unless a group of trustworthy medical specialists decide that keeping the fetus in the mother's womb will cause her death. And that should only be done after all of the means 
of keeping the fetus alive have been exhausted. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, all of this falls under the sharia of Allah. Your opinions, your thoughts, your feelings, none of it matters. If you want to meet Allah as an obedient Muslim who accepts his sharia, we accept what Allah chose for us. We accept what Allah decrees for us. We accept what Allah, or how Allah wants us to live our lives, if we are indeed truthful and want to be with the believers on the day of resurrection. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. So my dear brothers in Islam and sisters in Islam, looking at all of this, let's look at those who oppose the religion of Allah and what Allah said about them. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى ألم يعلم أنه من يحادد الله ورسوله فأن الله فأن له نار جهنم خالدا فيها ذلك الخيج العظيم. Allah says what means know that whoever opposes Allah or His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم whoever shows hostility to Allah or His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم certainly for him will be the fire of جهنم to abide therein and this would be the extreme disgrace. ثم قال الله وما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله رسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمرهم ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل ضلالا مبينا. And Allah says what means it is not for a believer. Again, these ayahs that reference the mu'min, the believer, should always bring our attention. We should listen twice as much and make it as clear as possible because we want to be with the believers on the day of resurrection. It's not for the believer, the man or the woman. When Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have decreed a matter that they should have any opinion or option in their decision. When the matter is decreed, then we have no option in that decision. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger وسلم, he is indeed strayed in plain error. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these issues are not changeable by our intellect, our feelings, our thoughts, our opinions, our desires, our wins, our emotions. This does not change a ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or one of His Messengers sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We reminded ourselves in the khutbah and Eid, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا that Allah said this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and chosen for you Al-Islam as your religion. Al-Islam is the religion of Islam, the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose and that he revealed to his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how the companions of radiallahu anhum wa ardahum how they lived it and implemented it so do not let society sway or dictate you to the views you have because here oh wow you're you're yeah, I mean, you're uh, uh, you know so inconsiderate you're so uncompassionate you're so right wing or whatever if you don't agree with the common uh, thread of what's being sent out there do not let society sway or dictate the views you have do not you we as Muslims, we don't need to be accepted by others. We do not need to have others agree with us. We do not need to change the deen of Allah to make it look or sound good. It is perfect the way it was revealed. We do not need to be accepted as progressive. And this is the word that everyone's picking up lately. Oh, I'm a progressive Muslim. You're either a Muslim or you're not. There is no progression in it. Allah, He revealed the deen for all times, knowing what would come knowing what would befall the people. If you don't see it clearly, then you go back to the ulama so they can clarify how clear it is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. That Allah, He dictated to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam back then, 1443 years ago, what is even applying to us today. So this abortion, this shari'ah, in shari'ah, again, remember that shari'ah is all of Islam. It is what we're supposed to follow to the best of our capability. Even we're not, we're not, when we're not in a land that is a Muslim land or run by Islamic law, we're commanded never to take a life or a soul without due right. And Islam came to, gave, to give women rights they did not have before. Islam came to do away with the evil practice of jahiliyyah, of killing off the, 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 the children or the infants as they were born. 
Yet we find this debate, and we find Muslims just saying, oh yeah, we are progressive, we're allowed to do this. It's, uh, the soul's not in until 120 days, we can terminate the pregnancy before that. And that is a lie, that is a lie, that is a lie against Allah and His Messenger wasallam. So do not speak without knowledge. Because for you could be a punishment in the hellfire. فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَنْ أَسْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا لِيُضِلَّ النَّاسِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says what means, then who does more wrong than the one who invents a lie against Allah to lead mankind astray without knowledge. Certainly Allah guides not the people who are the ظَالِمُونَ those who are polytheists and those who do wrong. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam does not have to be Progressive, as stated here in America. It's perfect the way it is. So hold on to your views. We do not need people to accept us or to accept our views. And we do not have to follow society, not on the LGBTQ homosexuality issue, not on the abortion issue, not on any issue. Our beliefs, our opinions, quote unquote, should be dictated with what we should follow as Muslims from the Quran. The book of Allah, the speech of Allah, and the sunnah of His Messenger So be unique. Take pride in the differences that Allah gave us in terms of our books. Take pride in the differences Allah gave us in terms of our beliefs. Regardless of how the people will judge us. Stick your ground for what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. And the believers should always enjoin the ma'roof and forbid the munkar. This is what the believers should do. And they should believe in their Lord. Do not forget why we're here. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah did not create jinn or us, mankind, except to worship Him. In that worship is following His sharia to the best of your ability. And having views that the sharia has, even if it's not the law of the land that you reside in. Allah is the best of planners. His qadr is the qadr we should trust, and the one we should be patient with. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, be cautious how you state any opinion that you may have in your opinions. Again, they should be founded in the Quran and the Sunnah. They should be the Islamic way, the Islamic law, the Islamic Sharia. Especially with these issues that are coming up because many people are delving into statements that could earn them a place in the hellfire by saying against Allah and His Messengers وسلم, what has no proof or evidence in the Quran or the Sunnah. So be mindful of this. And take this and be proud of the stances that we have following the deen of Allah. Allah makhfir lil muslimin wal muslimat. Mu'minin wal mu'minat. Ahyaa'i min humul amwaat. Inna ka anta sami'un qalib al-mujib al-da'wat. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati yawma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين